questions. So if you want to go back and uh, watch it later, it'll be posted on the Rutgers Cooperative Extension website, as well as our face. I think um, we have a YouTube page that they put it in that you can go to that link as well. So um, I'm gonna pull my slides up. Can you see that okay, Jackie? Yes, yes. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Christine Zellers and I'm here today with uh, Jackie Pascalero, who is a consultant with the Family Community Health Sciences Department in Cape May. And um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, I'm the educator slash assistant professor for Rutgers Cooperative Extension. And Cooperative Extension has people that um, are in all of the counties. I think we just added Hunterton County. Uh, so we're, I think, in 21 of the counties across the state. There's three departments. There's um, Agricultural and Natural Resources, there's 4-H and Youth Development, and then there's my department, which is Family and Community Health Sciences. And in Family and Community Health Sciences, we focus on wellness and other um, nutrition, exercise, things to help keep us all healthy. So um, today's session is only 30 minutes long. I try to do these lunch and learns so that they're available during people's lunch and that they can enjoy their lunch um, hour by maybe catching something of informational value to keep you healthy and then go out for a walk. I know today that's probably not a, an option, um, but maybe you can enjoy a healthy lunch or something like that. And um, today's discussion is going to be on portions and um, how we get really distorted by the portions that we eat. It's, it's not hard in today's world, and I'll give you a little history as to how that happened. But um, we have three objectives for today, as I always try to do. The first one is portions and um, serving. So we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between what a portion is and what a serving size is so that you have the background on that and you can make the best choices possible for you and your family. And then um, we're also going to talk about why portions are important um, and, and what impact that's had on us, maybe individually, but you know, especially as a society overall. And then finally, we're going to talk about ways to control your portions, give you some hints and ideas, and um, kind of think about ways that you might be able to easily look at your portions and make changes there if that is something that you uh, so desire. So before we move on, I am going, last time we did a lot in the chat, and I thought that that was a really fun interactive session. It was helpful for me because I wasn't just staring at the screen. I can't see any of you, unfortunately, which is one of the things I love about teaching. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to know that everybody was still there and that everybody was awake. Um, so I put this picture of this lovely cheeseburger on the uh, screen here and we're going to I'm going to ask you to guess how many ounces so how many ounces is that cheeseburger so throw it in the chat um, Jackie's kind of monitoring that put it in there we're not going to look at it right now we're going to come back to it in a future slide but just take a minute and look at that I mean you can do a little comparison with the size of the bun there I guess I mean the fries um, but just Take your best guess. There's no wrong answer. It's just for fun. So take a guess and see what happens. Jackie, is, is there anything popping up in the chat? Yeah, I see some. I have, yeah, I just saw some. Not yet. Okay, I saw one pop up. Did you see any? I just want to make sure you can see them. There you go. You got them coming. All right, hold on to them. Keep, and you can keep adding. You can change your, of your mind if you want. But we'll, like I said, we'll get back to that in a few minutes. So as I said, to start out, we're going to talk about um, the different the difference between portions and serving sizes. So if you have viewed my um, or any of my colleagues presentations on nutrition facts labels, this is an example of the nutrition facts label. This is one of the new facts labels. Um, it's kind of cut off there, which is OK, because my point here is I wanted to show you has been mentioned before that the one thing that you should look at right away, first thing you should go to when you're looking at the nutrition facts label is the serving size. So you always wanna make sure you're looking at the serving size. And would it be really clear to point out that um, portions are not serving sizes. So there is a difference. A portion is actually how much you put on your plate or how much you're eating out of the bag or the amount you're eating. The serving size, 
excuse me, however, is the amount that you um, that is recommended you eat or that not necessarily recommended. Let me take that back. The, the serving size is the amount that the average American is eating for a 2000 calorie diet. So, for instance, if I need a 2000 calorie diet to maintain a healthy weight and Jackie needs a 2400 calorie diet based on her age, her gender, her activity level, we, we need different amounts. So that they have taken the average because imagine if they put a nutrition facts label on every package for every different amount of calories people needed to consume, it would be filled, right? We, we wouldn't be able to see the packaging or the, what's inside. So they took that average and that average is 2000 calories. So it might be different for Jackie. It might be different for you. It might be different for me. So you need to keep that in mind, but you want to know that the average is um, there for the serving size. I have down at the bottom here, um, which I've showed before in my presentations, the link to choosemyplate.gov. This is a great resource, and Jackie's going to put that in the chat if anybody wants to take a look at it. And then afterwards, when I send out the follow-up email, I will include this link so you can use it then too. But you can go in and put your specific gender, age, um, activity level, your weight, and figure out how many calories you, could, you should be consuming, and that will give you the key as to how to look at the label. So getting back to the portions, um, again, they're how much you put on the plate. They're not how much is the average. It's just kind of what you're eating. The serving sizes is, again, it's for the average American. So it's going to vary for you. And I can't stress that enough. Like, don't think just because it says you need to eat two thirds of a cup, that's what you should be eating. You have to do the measurements and figure that out based on your calorie intake and what you need. Oh, we're not turning. There we go. So why do portions matter so much? Um, one of the examples I always used to use, especially with when I taught children, because when I was in the classroom a lot more, they, um, they relate to things that you can give them examples of. So let's think about portions and how they've changed. So this bagel looks relatively small to me. And I'm sure you'll all understand when I say, which is what I would say to the kids, you know, the bagels that are like the size of your face. So anymore, if you think, I remember when I was a kid, bagels were much, much, much smaller. And now they've grown and grown and grown. So a bagel is a good example of how things have changed and how eating that whole bagel could actually mean we're consuming a lot of what we need for the entire day or more. So that's one of the reasons portions really matter is because if you're eating a portion versus the serving size that you should be eating, you could really be overeating. In the 1970s, the size portions really started to become larger in the United States, and that continued on a trend, an upward trend, well into the 1990s. So that meant that Americans were eating larger sizes, they were eating more calories, and that more calories meant that you were gaining more weight. People were, as a nation, we were gaining more weight. And there was a study done, um, a, a, actually a journal article published in the uh, Public Health Journal showing that uh, by Young and Nestle, that there was a direct link between the increase in size of food, you know, so the bigger bagels and the bigger, you know, sodas and the, all those bigger servings. As they got bigger, so did America's waistline. So we can see that there's a direct link by that portion and us eating the entire portion um, versus the serving size that our bodies actually actually require to maintain a healthy weight. So you want to be uh, aware of those. Hey, skip ahead on me. So this is a little description of how things have changed. And I thought that it would be, again, another fun way to interact with one another in the in the chat. Still haven't gotten back to that burger. We're going to get there in a minute. But let's look at soda or soft drinks or soda pop, whatever you call it. When soda first came out, um, there was a size that was normal um, for people to consume. But that, again, with that growth since the 1970s, has really, really changed and has really, really become bigger. So I want you to put in the chat how many times bigger do you think it is? So from the original soda or pop or whatever you want to call it again, coming out, to today's big fountain, I don't want to name it by name, what they call it, but that extra large soda that we get when we go to the convenience store, the fast food store, those really big giant ones. 
How many times bigger do you think they are now? Put that in the chat and, and we'll we'll have a little talk about that. So uh, somebody says five times bigger. That's a good guess. Five, triple the size. Okay. Anybody else want to guess? Three times, four times. They're good guesses. All right, so let's look at it. The actual amount that it has increased in the years that we have gotten to those bigger sizes is 10 times. So from that original inception of, of soda pop being introduced to what we have now is about is actually more than 10 times bigger in that really big extra large soda most of the time. So when soda first came out, it was introduced in a six ounce container. And think about that now, if you go to the store and you get one of those really big ones that you walk around with kind of all day, that could be 64 ounces and maybe even bigger sometimes. I know for a while, I think they were even higher than that. So it's about 10 times larger. Again, that's an average. Um, and when you think about that 10 times larger, you know, you're like, okay, well, what does that mean? That means in that 64 ounce soda that you're getting 800 calories. That's 800 calories that have no nutritional value. So it's not nutrient dense. It's empty calories. So really it's just, you know, sugar preservatives and all the things they put into soda. So you're not getting any nutritional value out of it whatsoever. And it's 800 calories. Now, if you look at that in terms of a 2000 calorie diet, that's 40% of your daily calories right there in a soda. So again, you're not getting the nutrients you need that your body needs to support yourself. You're eating a lot or drinking a lot as the case may be, and it can make it really hard for you to maintain a healthy weight. Now, remember that's based on a 2000 calorie diet. So if you need less than 2000 calories, it could be well over that 40% mark of your day for calories. So I think it's also worth mentioning that you know, this trend in the United States where the portions have gotten so much bigger, and there's a lot more information around that now, we're a lot more aware of it. But in other countries, they their extra large is the size of our large in, you know, maybe soda or fries. So not only are we doing it larger here in the United States, but we're doing it larger on most scales than everybody else in the world. So of course, that is going to be, again, attributed to the fact that Americans have a, a much larger um, waistline, that we have had a big increase in the obesity rates because we're eating more in our portions than what the rest of the world is, really. So if you pay attention to those portions and keep them um, in check so that we're not eating too much or drinking too much, as the case may be, then you're a lot more likely to be able to maintain that healthy weight. And I just want to state too, you know, when you're talking about the the soda, if um, a lot of times it comes up that it's cost effective, and that was, you know, again in the beginning, people would look at the comparison and be like, oh, well, the bigger ones, you know, it's more cost effective to buy that giant one. And a lot of times, especially the convenience stores, like they'll put promotions on the bigger ones, so oh, it's cheaper to buy that. But you have to think about the long term effects on that. How long is that going to impact? Um, your health and what is that going to do to your overall health? So my husband always said, get that one, it's, you know, get the bigger one, it's a better buy. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want the bigger one. So it's okay to say you don't want the bigger one. It's okay to buy and think about that portion when you're purchasing um, for your overall health and well-being down the line. All right, so we're back to the burger. Um, beyond the super growth, how much? So um, I saw a couple guesses. Jackie, do you want to unmute and give them? I can't see them now. Um, I saw 90, what were the ounces on that, what people were thinking? I see one, uh, one person said nine ounces, but that's all I'm seeing on my end. Okay. I did see somebody put in 16 ounces. Does anybody want to change their guess? Um, it's a little bit bigger on the screen now. Um, this burger is actually 32 ounces of meat. So, I mean, it's hard to tell, but that's one of the things we're going to talk about. You know, sometimes you don't realize how much you're even eating if they don't label it like it's supersized or it's the big burger or something like that, or, or it doesn't say that it's a pound of beef or whatever. Um, this is 32 ounces. So you can see over here on the left-hand side that um, the daily recommendation for protein for one day, so that's one day, 
um, is five and a half ounces, and this burger is 32 ounces. So um, that's almost a whole week of your protein right there in one sitting. So th- I, I use that example to think about it. So, you know, when you think about, okay, if you're splurging, that's one thing. But if you become a regular eater of oversized portions, then that can really take a toll on your health. You know, um, it's going to make it hard to maintain a healthy weight. It's going to be um, more difficult to uh, prevent chronic diseases like diabetes and cancers and heart disease. So those portions have a toll on us overall. And we want to make sure that, you know, we're not overeating to the point that every day this is happening. If you were to do this every day, you know, and and you have a week's worth of your protein here, then obviously it's going to really take a toll overall. So that's a good reason to mine those portions. I will, uh, the link or the the graphic that's over here on the left-hand side with the 2000 cal, oh, sorry, the 2000 calorie diet, I will, again, I'll send that out with the resources that come out after the discussion. All right, so here's some things to think about. Um, portion sizes, you wanna be, make sure you're considering them for all foods. Um, so it's not just the burgers and the sodas and the fries and the chips. You want to think about portion sizes for all of your food, because even even things that, um, you know, too much of a good thing can be bad, too. So I put the peanuts here. This is an example. And you can see over here, there's a little red ring around the peanuts. The red ring is actually probably about a portion size. So I looked on the label of the peanuts I have in my house. And they said that one ounce or 32 peanuts is a serving size. So that to me, if I had asked, if I had been asked in this presentation, is this a portion size? I probably would have said, yeah, because, you know, looking at it, it could be very deceitful and it could make us think it's a portion size. So, again, it's important to look at what the serving size is. And then, you know, we'll take we'll talk about how you might maybe maybe find ways to measure that out and think about that um, when you're sitting down. So make sure even if it's a good for you food, nuts are a good for you food, you know, they're, they have protein, they are nutrient dense, but they're also really high in calories. So if you sit and eat the entire can, then you're consuming a lot of calories. So where it's a better option than a candy bar, obviously, because there's, you know, it's nutrient dense, it also has a lot of calories. So you still want to watch that. Um, it's important too when you think about portions, role modeling for children. So that was when I was doing the research for this presentation, a lot um, what would pop up in the scholarly articles was about that you're if you role model for a child, you can set the example on how to best monitor portions. I'm not saying be really strict with kids about it, but if you're using the example of looking at how much you're eating, then kids are going to be more aware of the fact that they could overeat. So you want to be a good role model. Um, I always say it, but you know you want to make sure that you're eating from all five food groups. Um, They all provide nutrients, and if you are eating from all five food groups, then you're less likely to overeat by sitting down and having a a bag of chips, um, you know, and not accounting for that. So you you eat from all five food groups, you'll remain full longer, and you will be able to maintain a healthy weight, but you'll also be less likely to eat those less nutrient-dense empty calories. Um, and again, the variety of food within those food groups is important. So you want to eat all the different color vegetables and fruits and, you know, different types of protein, not just one all the time. All right, another guessing game for you. So we have three plates of pasta linguine here. And um, I've mentioned it before, but how we view things really does matter. It's interesting and there's been studies done around this. So that's why I put it in there. So put in the chat, if you would, please. Uh, which plate of pasta do you think has the most pasta on it? Number one, okay. Three, three. All the same, all the same. Yeah, I asked my family this and I got much like the questions that you're answering, three. All right, so the actual winner of the contest, um, the largest is actually number one, plate number one. That has a cup of pasta on it. Not the plate on the end, number three, has a half a cup of pasta, and so does number two. So two and three are actually the same amount of pasta. They're on a different size plate. 
So that's one of the things that I always recommend. I'm going to recommend it now. I'll recommend it again at the end. Taking a smaller plate, and there's been research done around this too, eating off of that smaller plate. Plates since 19, uh, I think it's ni- since 1980, have increased in size. So we, you know, the size of a plate is bigger. We eat off of bigger plates. And when you eat off a bigger plate, the food seems smaller. So number two is actually the biggest plate here. Again, it has a half cup of pasta on it. Three has a half cup of pasta on it. And one has a cup of pasta in it. If you look at the size and how you interpret it on your plate, in your mind, you know, if you're eating off of that smaller plate, you're going to think that you're eating more. And it's going to give you that sensation that you're, you know, full quicker because it's almost like your mind will play tricks on it. And again, there's been studies done around this that show that there's actually um, some logic behind this, that the people do perce- their perception of how much they're eating is important. So my suggestion, and this is what I do, I eat off a smaller plate. And, you know, um, sometimes people will sit down at the table and they'll, when they're guests, they'll look around and they'll see my little plate and my husband's little plate and they're kind of like, what's going on here? But, you know, I eat off the smaller plate because it gives me that sensation and it could be a really good trick for helping you to control your portions, make your mind think you're eating more than what you're eating and let you feel full faster so that you're not eating as much. So I thought that that was an interesting uh, concept here. And, and I, when I was measuring them out, you know, I took the, the measuring cup and measured them all out so they were equal. So um, they, they are pretty, pretty accurate on those results. So that's something for you to give a try. Um, so here's some easy ways to make changes because I want to make sure that I'm giving you um, some, you know, not just the information that we want to, obviously you want to make the portion sizes smaller and use serving sizes, but it's important that you don't just eat from the package. So I actually did this the other day and I was so mad at myself after I did. I hadn't eaten a lot that day, so I got hangry and I started eating. And it's a lot easier to just start eating and not know how much you're eating. So don't eat from the package. You know, a serving size of potato chips is about one ounce. If you look on the package, and the whole bag is nine ounces. So if you sit down and just eat, you could be eating, you know, nine times more than you want to, or however more than you want, but just eating from the package, it really leads to that aimless eating. So you wanna make sure that you're not doing that. As I mentioned before, use the smaller plates or bowls. The smaller plate in the picture is on the left-hand side, and it doesn't look like it's that much smaller in the picture, but when you're eating, it could lead you to taking less on your plate, but it also makes your plate seem a lot more full. So it can help you from going back for more and you know, eating just what's on your plate and a smaller amount of what's just on your plate. Um, try using smaller portions. And you know, if you whatever you usually use, maybe you wanna use a smaller portion of that. It's important, again, to try to stick to the serving size. So if you can do that and you can measure that out, um, it's going to help you to save food. Um, You're not going to waste as much. You know, if you're just kind of rolling it on, like think about, I guess probably the best measure of that would be Thanksgiving dinner. Like when it's going by, everybody's hungry. It looks so good. It's a a great meal. So you're just kind of heaping it on there. Um, And obviously that could really lead you to overeating your portion or your your serving size. So you want to be mindful of that. Um, limit your distractions while you're eating, right? So if you if you are watching TV, studies have shown that you know you're likely to eat more if you're watching TV while you eat. If you're in front of the screen, which I will admit I am guilty of. So um, if you're in front of the screen and you're watching something or you're working, you might be eating more. So that's another reason to like use that smaller plate and measure out your serving sizes ahead of eating so that you're not just mindlessly eating. The other time that you might mindlessly eat, which is a a good time to do it, I guess, is if you're out to dinner. So when you go out to dinner, a good way to avoid mindlessly eating or being distracted by friends, which would be a great thing, is always a good thing and something that I'm really looking forward to when uh, the pandemic is over is being able to go out and eat dinner with friends. But when you're eating, try setting the fork down in between bites so that you're not kind of shoveling. And that could be at the dinner table too, not just when you're out to dinner. Um, So if you put the fork down and chew a little while, that can help to control your portion sizes. The other thing you can do when you're out eating a meal is, and I'm going to, in the next slide, I'll look at telling you how to kind of figure out a, a good little guess for how much food is on your plate. But think about maybe um, asking 
like thinking ahead of time, like, okay, I ordered the chicken. I know when that chicken comes out, it's going to be, you know, much more than three ounces that I want to eat for my dinner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the server when they bring my dinner out to bring me a to-go container. You can portion that size out, put the rest in the to-go container. You have lunch for the next day, and then you're just going to eat that much. And even if you are distracted a little bit by the conversation going on, then you're not going to overeat. So that's a trick to, you know, ask for it to go. Or even if you section it off on your plate, if you don't want to ask for the to-go box right away, sometimes the waiter gets offended. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's okay. I just don't want to eat too much. So even if you section it off on your plate, that can be a, a good thing. Um, I've had waiters ask me if everything's okay because I sectioned it off and I didn't eat all of my dinner. But that's okay to not eat all of your dinner. A lot of times when we eat out, they're giving us big portions. Nowadays, they're also offering the small plates. So that's an option too when you go out to dinner is look at the menu and see if you know you want to offer the small plate. I like to have my leftovers for the next day. So I'll usually order the regular size and then put it in, in a to-go container. So just some tricks to make some changes so that you're mindful of that um, experience while you're eating and you're, you're not overeating. And hopefully you can find ways to put them into effect. All right, and then this is a little, so I always tell Jackie when I'm doing my research, I get, she calls it a wormhole, I call it a rabbit hole. You go down and you start looking things up and they've got great information and there's all these scholarly journals and next thing you know, where am I? I've been looking at this information for so long. So um, one of the things I really wanted to find out, I have a lot of good information and there's a lot of good information out there about using your hand as a cheat for out for, trying to figure out, so, okay, I'm out to dinner. I want to eat the right portion of meat. How do I do that? I'm not going to take a measuring cup or a scale with me to dinner, right? So how do I do that? Or even if you're at work, at a work party or wherever you are, how do I have an idea of how to measure that out? So I did a lot of research to find out if there was any scientific evidence behind the fact that you can use your hand, because a lot of people will say, use a baseball or a golf ball or a deck of cards. Um, and using your hand has become popular. So I did some research. There's not a lot of information out there, but there was one study that was done in Sydney, Australia that said, yep, you can use your hand. And in the research, there was 67 people um, um, that took this quiz and did the, the measurements and everything. And they found that they were really um, accurate um, with coming up with that. Now I will preface that with the fact that I have a real, my hand, a really tiny hand. So my amount of protein, the three ounces of meat that you can see over there on the right hand side in the palm of my hand might not be as much as say my son who's six foot five, um, his hand's going to be a lot bigger. So it's going to be more than three ounces of meat. So this is a generic rule of thumb, no pun intended, that you can use to try to figure out whether or not <clears throat> you're eating the right size. It just gives you like some type of tool to measure, um, like a guess. Okay. So don't, it's not absolutely accurate. I'm going to tell you that, but it gives you that idea. So the length and width of your thumb is approximately the um, amount of one ounce of cheese. Um, the the th thumbprint, I guess, is the best way to, to th say at the end of your thumb here is about a teaspoon. And you can see, you know, it does measure up. I put them next to each other. It is, is relatively close. Three of those thumbprints would be a tablespoon then. And then the three ounces of meat is the size of the palm of your hand. So this just gives you a little tool to try to maintain that and figure whether or not that is accurate. So um, Jackie is going to put in the chat right now a link to an evaluation, which if you don't want to take it now, I know we're right about at time um, to evaluate my teaching today. And I would very much appreciate it if you would take that survey. I will also uh, send it out in the um, information I send for follow up that you can take it then if you like, and I'll I'll put the scan bar in there, the QRL, and then you can scan it on your phone if it's easier for you to take it on the, on that if you like. So, if you would be so kind to take that either now or take it at the end of um, when I send out the backup information, it's really helpful to me to know how I'm doing with my teaching, and um, so I can improve on things, and you know, hopefully keep everybody happy that's in the audience and give you uh, useful information and it's helpful for the university as well. These are my resources, of course, and then finally, uh, this is where you can find us. So um, we always post everything, uh, the recordings, which today was recorded. It's going to be, it'll be posted up on the website, like I said, 
And you can find the um, find us. We have a new Cape May County FCHS Facebook page. So we'd love it if you follow us or like us on that. That's very helpful. Uh, we post things there as well as on the Rutgers Cooperative Extension Facebook page. So you can always find different um, programs that we're doing. And then we have the statewide FCHS website as well as the Cape May County website that's there. My email address is there and you'll receive a follow up email, like I said, from me, and I always uh, welcome your questions and appreciate that. And I'm going to stop sharing. If there's anybody that does have any questions, I'm glad to answer those now. I'm not going to be hosting a lunch and learn in the next two months because that's Thanksgiving holiday and Christmas holiday. And I didn't figure anybody would um, want to get on a call those days, um, but I will be starting up again in, in January. So starting in January, we'll have the lunch and learn series. I'm excited to be able to um, share these with you and I hope it's helpful to be able to get a little um, wellness information and um, healthy information during your lunch hour. So is there any questions anybody has? No. All right, well, thanks for joining us. And again, if you have questions, feel free to email me. I hope that, you know, looking at the portions, you'll realize that um, sometimes they're not what we think they are. I, I do it too. Like, oh, I, I I love when you like look up when you buy something. I think, I can't remember where it was. I looked up a chicken one time platter or something that I was gonna eat for lunch as I was sitting in the drive-through and I actually pulled out of the drive-through when I figured out <laughs> it was going to be for me calorie wise so you know it's it's worth um taking a look into and you know don't drive yourself crazy about it but it's good to be mindful about it so that you can help to maintain a healthy weight so have a healthy day everybody stay dry and uh, i will see you for lunch and learn again in january hopefully take care